Hello guys, my name is Maurer Adwan. I'm a concept artist from Algeria and you are tuned to photomanipulation.com. On this channel, we take you beyond Photoshop basics and into the world of advanced Photoshop techniques. If you like what you heard, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And today on this video, I'm going to show you a speed art of me doing this artwork. And while the work is going, I'm going to give you a tips and tricks and explain some steps. And trust me, you might want to stick till the end of this video because I'm sure one of these tips and tricks will help you take your work to the next level. So without any further ado, let's start with the image. <laughs> Okay guys, so I got this uh, image that you are seeing right now uh, in the background. Uh, I really, when I saw it, I wanted to use it as a uh, reference for my uh, background. I wanted the same colors on my scene. So what I uh, did, first of all, uh, I could have just get the image and sampled from the dark areas and the bright areas and my uh, made make my own gradient map, but I found it easier if I get the image itself. Uh, increase the size of it till it's uh, filling the uh, canvas of my work and then blur it a lot till you make it look like it's a gradient map. Okay, uh, so right now I'm using the select and mask to uh, cut the complicated objects like trees, the messy objects like trees and buildings with uh, bumped edges and all of that. Okay, I already talked about uh, how to use select and mask to uh, cut anything in Photoshop. Uh, the video in uh, the channel, I'm going to put the link down in the description down below. Okay, so make sure to uh, check the, the video if you want to know how I use select and mask techniques to cut these objects. And now this is the thing that I want to talk about. This is the most important thing right here. Okay, so I want you to look at the top right. Uh, you will find that color window right there uh, will, where you can see the uh, color wheel. Okay, so let's not focus on the color wheel. Let's focus on the hue, saturation, and brightness. And important, the most important, let's focus on the brightness, okay? So as I told you before, I uh, got this image as a background because I like the colors and I want to use it as a reference because I want the same colors on that background uh, to be my background colors. So what I did is I grabbed uh, random brushes from Deviant Arts of Trees. I will try to put the links of the brushes that I got. Uh, if you don't find it on the uh, description, please remind me in the comments so I can add them. And okay, so here's what I did. I got the tree brush and I sampled the color from the background, uh, random place from the background. And then what I do is uh, notice how I'm changing the uh, brightness. So what I'm doing now is I sample from an area, a specific area, and then I go to the brightness. I start decreasing it uh, by like 10, 20 points, 30 points till uh, the uh, trees is really dark because I want these trees to be my front trees okay and then after that I make a new empty layer I put it under the uh, first trees layer and then I assemble from the same areas uh, I go to the uh, brightness I decrease it more but not like the first time I will make sure my first time I decrease the brightness by a lot of values the second time uh, just a bit and the more i add more layers the more i start to increase the brightness more so the idea here is i want to make my front my front trees darker and the more i add uh, layers uh, behind those trees i want them to look brighter than the front trees uh, so this is the rule of uh, the values if you want to paint uh, an atmospheric uh, scene make sure the front objects are darker and then the more they get further the more they get brighter and less detailed okay so as you can see here i'm making the brightness uh, i decrease the brightness i make them dark and then i add a new layer and as you can see i make the brightness i increase it the more than the last time so it will be brighter than the front trees and i keep going as you can see, 
the more I make my objects far, uh, further, the more I make them uh, brighter. Okay, so here I start to add smoke, but uh, it's not really important. You can barely see it in the uh, final list, uh, in the final image. If you want to add smoke, you can add it or fog or uh, yeah, all of that. Uh, just make sure to um, uh, decrease the brightness, paint the smoke, and then increase the brightness and paint over the smoke that you painted before because we want to add depth to that smoke. We don't want it to be just a uh, one value object. Well, the smoke is not an object. And then uh, I sampled from the background and then I went, uh, I went to the brightness on the color window and I increased it more because I want to uh, paint the fog in front of these trees uh, to add more atmospheric feels to it. Yeah, make sure to uh, change the blending mode to uh, lighten. And then what I did is I added a new layer, empty layer, fill it with black, and then I add noise, went to uh, filter, blur, and then uh, click on blur, and then go to the uh, blender mode, make it screen, and the opacity around three to five. Uh, here we have these steps I made with Blender 3D. Uh, if you want me to make uh, blender tutorials on how to make uh, these objects right here as you can see uh, the uh, stairs uh, I will gladly do it just let me know in the uh, comments down below if you want to see blender tutorials and let's keep going hello guys it's me again if you are getting a value from this video be sure to like subscribe and comment down below it's free easy and really supports the channel let's keep going
Okay, so now I'm using hue and saturation. Uh, um, sorry, I'm using a black and white adjustment layer to make uh, the scene black and white. And the reason why is to see the values in a better view and the closer objects more uh, contrasted and uh, more detailed. And the further the objects uh, get, the less contrast and the less detail will be shown. And of course, with the soft brush, I'm going to paint on areas that I think it's bright. Okay, here, so focus on this scene right here. We have a lot of greens. We have the greens on the uh, branches. We have greens on the tree. We have greens on the rocks and the uh, ground. So what I did now is I went to select menu right there and went to color range. And then when the color range uh, menu pop up, go to the first option and select uh, the colors and the colors that you want to select is green after you get the green uh, it will be selected make a new layer and then click on the make mask from selection as you can see and here we have the uh, yellows here we have the yellows not the greens right now i have the mask i clicked on the mask i'm now inside the mask uh, and here I believe I selected the yellow uh, color from the color range and then what I do now is I go back to the layer and then I go back to the select and then color range again and then I select the green color and then I go back to the uh, mask I click alt and then click on the mask itself so I can get uh, into the mask and then click on shift f5 and select the white color or just click on the uh, pocket tool and shows the uh, white color and then paint click uh, anywhere in the image and he will paint it white for you because there is a selection and as you can see here and then i use the uh, levels to make the whiteness uh, the uh, brightness and here i use the levels to make the values of the uh, greens and the yellows brighter as you can see okay so what why i did that uh, I want to be more specific when I'm uh, fixing the colors of the greens because as you can see for example here we have uh, the tree if I tried to fix the colors of the tree it will fix the whole tree uh, with the mouse uh, sorry with the mouse and with the trunk itself and with the branches but when I'm trying to fix the greens of the moss uh, that's growing on the tree I don't want to affect the trunk I want to affect the greens and the yellows of the tree and that's it so I can uh, blend it and so I can blend it with the rest of the, the greens on the rock and on the ground so this is why I use the color range so I can be more specific when I'm uh, fixing the colors of the greens Okay, so this is a fog uh, bundle that I got from uh, Neo Stock uh, website. Uh, they have a very good uh, smoke, fire, uh, all of the elements uh, bundles if you want to, to give them. The link is going to be down in the description. They are really useful and I like to use them in my works. And right now I'm painting the haze and the fog uh, on my uh, runes uh, objects in the back. And how I'm doing it, I go to the object itself, I click two times and then I add inner glow and I click on the reset to default. Uh, uh, then he will uh, give me the white color, click on the white color, uh, color and then sample from the background. That's it and then click uh, out of the uh, image option, uh, uh, the layer options, and then click on the FX uh, icon and click on create layer. And after I add the inner glow, I sample just from the areas that's behind the uh, gate, 
and then I go back to the brightness on the uh, color window. I decrease the brightness by 10 values and then I grab my gradient, the transparent gradient, and then I click on the top and I drag it down as, I've, uh, as if I'm adding haze to it. About the model, like you see here, he has harsh light uh, on him, like it was a sunlight. And most of the people, when they say a uh, good uh, model, but they see the uh, harsh light on them, they just give up on using it because uh, the sunlight or any harsh light is hard to fix. But in my case, it was too easy. What I did is I selected the magic stamp tool uh, I made the tolerance around 20 so I selected I highlighted the uh, areas that has the harsh light as you can see and then I added a curves adjustment layer and then made them darker I gave it a lot of blue and cyan to match the color of the shadows and then I got these black uh, annoying strokes because this magic stamp tool will not be too specific so you will get that uh, black strokes and to fix them just highlight them with the laser tool and then click on shift f5 and select content aware and that will fix it easy I selected a random brush that looks like grass. I think I'm not sure if it was grass. I just selected it and then I start to sample from the grass and paint on that dark areas because of this shadow because I didn't like the shadow. If you have learned something from this video, I'm sure you will learn more from my previous videos. So make sure to check my all this stuff on this channel. Also follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And again, please guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next videos. Peace. And the update, the updated, sorry, the update. <laughs> I'm struggling with English right now. Uh, yeah, the uh, update. Did it? Oh my god. <laughs>
the updated the updated the up the up dated uh that's what the updated the updated 